Hey everybody, this is Barnon 11970. Thank you for watching my video. Uh, today we're going to be talking about the um, Oath of Office. Now many of us have heard about this. It's basically for what police officers, military, and other high officials um, have to uh, swear to before they start their duties. Now, not many people actually know exactly what is in them. So I'm going to read some of the different versions of the Oath of Office that include back in the days of the Revolutionary War. And I, of course, will post the link on this, but I think this is important for people to really sing, have sink in and people to understand that we do, not all of us, take this pledge, but maybe we should at least believe in what it stands for. So I want to read the Oath of Enlistments and the, Oath of of uh, the Oaths of Office. Uh, the wording of the current Oath of Enlistment and Oath for Commissioned Officers is as follows. I, in your name, do solemnly swear or affirm that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, and that I will obey the orders of the President of the United States and the orders of the officers appointed over me according to the regulations of the Uniform Code of Military Justice, so help me God. That was Title X, U.S. Code, Act of uh, the 5th of May, 1960, replacing the wording first adopted in 1789 with amendment effective October 5th, 1962. The next is as follows. I in your name, have been appointed as an officer of the Army of the United States, as indicated above in the grade of such and such. Do solemnly swear or affirm that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, that I take this obligation freely without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion, and that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office upon which I am about to enter, so help me God. That's DA Form 71, 1st of August, 1959, for officers. That's the current. Now, I thought this would be a little bit interesting. I'm going to read the actual oath that they used during the Revolutionary War. Uh, the Continental Congress established different oaths for the enlisted men and the officers of the Continental Army. So the first one's going to be what the enlisted men swore to. The first oath uh, was voted on the 14th of June, 1775, as part of the act creating the Continental Army, and it read as follows. I, your name, have this day voluntarily enlisted myself as a soldier in the American Continental Army for one year, unless sooner discharged, and I do bind myself to confirm, or I'm sorry, to conform in all instances to such rules and regulations, as or or shall be established by the government of the said army. Interesting. The original wording was effectively replaced by Section 3, Article 1 of the Articles of War approved by Congress on September 20th, 1776, which specified that the oath of enlistment read, I, your name, swear or affirm, as the case may be, to be true to the United States of America and to serve them honestly and faithfully against all their enemies oppose, opposers whatsoever and to observe and obey the orders of the Continental Congress and the orders of the generals and the offices set over me by them. Now, the interesting thing you'll find is, um, and I will post the link, uh, the United States of America that they write in there is not in all capital letters. Now, what does that mean? Well, if you watch the other video that I talked about yesterday, and I recommend you watch it if you don't, if you didn't see it, is that anything in all capital letters is a corporation. Well, Back then, we were not a corporation, but in 1933, for the second and final time, our country went bankrupt and actually had to become a corporation. It's a fictional character. That's why you see now it's United States of America, all in capital letters. Again, you have to know about law and symbolism. Back then, they had United States of America just with a capital U, capital S, and a capital A. Everything else was lowercase. Let's continue and talk about the oath of the officers back in the Revolutionary War. The Continental Congress passed two versions of the oath of office, applied to military and civilian national officers. The first, on October 21, 1776, read, I, your name, do acknowledge the 13 United States of America, namely New Hampshire, 
Massachusetts Bay, Rhode Island, Connecticut, New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Delaware, Maryland, Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, and Georgia to be free, independent, and sovereign states. Remember that. And declare that the people thereof owe no allegiance or obedience to George the Third, King of Britain. And I renounce, refuse, and abjure any allegiance or obedience to him. And I do swear that I will, to the utmost of my power, support, maintain, and defend the said United States against the said King, George the Third, and his heirs and successors, and his and their abettors, assistants, and adherents, and will serve the United States in the office of, whatever that was, which I now hold, and in any other office which I may hereafter hold after their appointment, or under their authority, with fidelity and honor, and according to the best of my skill and understanding, so help me God. The revised version voted the 3rd of February, 1778, read, I, in their name, do acknowledge the United States of America to be free, independent, and sovereign states, and declare that the people thereof owe no allegiance or obedience to George III, King of Britain, and I renounce, refuse, and abjure any allegiance or obedience to him. And I do swear or affirm that I will, to the utmost of my power, support, maintain, and defend the said United States against the said King, George III, and his heirs and successors, and will serve the said United States in the office of, whichever uh, that is, which I now hold with fidelity, according to the best of my skill and understanding, so help me God. Very interesting words. And one thing you have to understand, back in those days, these separate states were supposed to be originally individual countries. That's why they say that they are free, independent, and sovereign states. Well, that doesn't seem to be the case anymore. When you have a federal government that takes control and tells each individual state what they can and cannot do, well... That's not what the oath is all about. It's acknowledging the fact that they are supposed to be free and independent sovereign states. That's why it's called the United States of America. So I think it was important to actually read that so people can get an understanding of what our military, what our even president, and our soldiers and infantry men and police officers things that they have to swear. They are, they are swearing allegiance not to the government. They are swearing allegiance to defend the Constitution from enemies foreign and domestic. And the problem is our government all makes us believe that we have to fear the foreign people, the people we can't see, the people that we don't know what's going on over there unless the media tells us. You'll never know what's going on in Afghanistan, or Libya, or the Soviet Union, or Greece, or England for that matter, unless you either, one, go there, or two, hear from somebody else. And they always make us scared. They use fear, because fear equals control. How many people do you worry about at night when you sleep at night? Do you worry about a terrorist coming into your house? Or do you worry about what the government's next plan is to take away more of your freedom, to take away more of your money, to the point where you're working just to survive? You don't go to the movies. You don't play anymore. You don't go out. You're just buying whatever you can that you can use to survive. The tyranny is not overseas. It's not foreign. And I'm not saying they're not bad people in this world, but, you know, I don't remember the last time we've been invaded by a foreign nation, and yet we go into other people's nations and justify it with whatever means they want to justify it with by trying to help the people, well, I don't remember them asking. But the point of the matter is we have to understand that the problem is closer to home. And unfortunately, it's our fault because we allow these things to continue. So there's a thing called divide and conquer, and they're doing it to this day. It's the oldest trick in the book, and as you can see, it still works. We have people in this community that don't work together. They fight amongst themselves. Instead of helping each other to grow and learn, we become abusive and angry. 
I've even gotten to the point where I've been angry at times. It's frustrating, but we need to see the writing on the wall and see the big picture that as long as we're divided and they're united, they will always win. It has to come a time where we take responsibility for our actions and decide this is the day that we don't allow it any longer. And the first step is to awaken the masses and let people know that you have to shut off your TV. You have to get out there and research. You have to just not believe everything that you're told. There's nothing wrong with questioning. It doesn't mean you'll get everything right. God knows I've made videos where I've been wrong, but I did not intentionally try and deceive people. There could be mistakes. There could be errors. There could be information that's wrong. But I would rather question things and be wrong than listen to everything and just take it as pure fact and just allow other people to dictate what I'm, to, to, what I'm supposed to believe in or what is good and evil. It's time we take responsibility back, we the people, and we can't allow divide and conquer to work anymore. That, why do you think they're, the news media is exploiting this whole Second Amendment thing right now? Because you have one side that's for banning of guns, one side that's against banning of guns. And while we are fighting back and forth about this kind of situation, which we are justified in doing, the people up top are stealing all of our gold, stealing all of our wealth, jumping ship, and then when the ship sinks... They've been long gone before we even re realize we're halfway underwater. It's time for us to start uniting, waking each other up, working together, and ending the petty arguments. And that's why the past couple of videos I've made to where people can remix them and post them on their own channels if they don't want to make their own. The only thing I ask is that you don't alter it, you don't change anything I say in any way, and if you'll be kind enough in the information box to at least mention where it comes from. And we all do our part. If you don't want to share my videos, make your own. This is not about me. This is about us working together. So for the people, the honest people out there that work in our police force, who work in our military, for the honest people in our government trying to make a change, and there's some out there, not everybody's evil, I say thank you for your part, and we need to start doing our part. First thing is to get the message out. Because united we stand, and divided we fall. And if we do nothing... That oath of office has nothing, means nothing. Our Constitution will be gone forever. This wonderful experiment that no other nation has ever had, that we have had the privilege of having, will be gone forever. Are we going to allow that to happen, or are we going to stand up? I guess that's up to you guys. Thanks for watching. Peace.